very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth will be moved and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar in trouble, though the mountains shake and its swelling say long. Come behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes waters cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns his chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Father, Lord, we come before you right now. Just simply to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you woke us up this morning, Heavenly Father. You set us on our way, Heavenly Father. Yes. Lord, you gave us life. Yes. Lord, you gave us breath. Yes. Lord, you gave us our breath. 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 Lord, you gave us our for keeping us, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, Heavenly Father, for all the things that you have done for us, Heavenly Father. The Lord has your servant. We ask that you would just continue to help us to be the servants that you have called us to be. Lord, help us to go out and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Help us to live lives that are pleasing before your sight. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord. For your mercy, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for not doing, uh, for not hurting us, Heavenly Father, in the ways that you could, in spite of our sins. So forgive us, Heavenly Father. Forgive us our sins, O oh Lord. Forgive us for those evil thoughts that we probably have had, Heavenly Father. Forgive us, Lord, for not doing the things that you have called us to do. But Lord, we say thank you. We thank you for it. The undying love that you sent the Lord Jesus to die for our sins. Lord, so that we can have eternal life with you, we say thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Lord, if it was not for you, we wouldn't even be here. We say thank you this morning. Thank you. Lord, you have been so good to us, Lord. Better than we have been to you, we say thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you for the type of God that you have been. And Lord, also on this morning, we thank you for our pastor, Pastor David. Lord, we thank you for 18 years of service on this call. And Lord, after many more years you have formed, we ask that you would just bless him, Heavenly Father. Take care of him, Heavenly Father. Protect him, Heavenly Father. Guide him, Heavenly Father, in the work that you have called him to do. And Lord, uh, let us sit on the side, not just sit on the side, we also join in with the Lord and Father. Lord, that your work may be done for the King. We thank you for him, Lord and Father. He encourages his heart. He encourages his heart, Lord and Father. Let him know that he is not alone. We thank you, Lord, for all that he has done. We ask you to bless his life, bless his wife, bless his children, bless his family, bless the works of his hands. Continue to keep him, protect the man, God, in his way. Lord, we just thank you in all things. We thank you, Lord, for being so good. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
are here for a presentation. Let's go. Greetings from the youth Sunday school class. Pastor David. Oh, we're going to do that one more time. Come on now, y'all. Shout it out. Let's go. Tribute from the youth Sunday school class. Pastor David.
for your 18 years of service. I put the pen to the paper again, kind of put rhyme to the reason. And it says, Lord, bless our pastor. As we celebrate your 18th year, we, the New Beginning Church family, rejoice and cheer. Lord, keep our pastor. This we pray through the many obstacles in his way. Every burden help him to bear. Keep him in his keep him in your tender, loving care. Give him strength and the ability as he cares for the new beginning church family. Lord, there is so much he has to do. He can't do it alone. He surely needs you. So keep him in your loving arm, safe from all danger and unseen harm. Lord, remove all fears, remove any doubt, allow your spirit to be in his power, so that when he speaks a word that is due, it will bring all your people closer to you.
all the old cool man. And then somebody said, he's just been good. Can you testify this morning that God has been, been real with you? I'm talking about the God that woke you this morning. I'm talking about the God that brought you out here this morning. The God that watched over you all night long. The God that fed you. The God who's keeping you right now. He is the awesome and the amazing God. He has blessed us one more year to come to the house of the Lord, the house of prayer, and just honor him and praise him and bless his name. Thank you so much for participation. Mark, I want to give our youth and young people a Hallelujah. The only problem here is that channel 13, channel 12, channel 2 wasn't present today. Because I contend that all of them are not locked up. All of them are not doing crazy stuff. All of them are not killing folks. There are some who are about the Lord's business. So if you can, Blast it over the air. Make it go viral. That God has blessed the New Beginning Church with young people who have something to say. Who have something to say about the Lord. And we're just glad about it. We're just so proud of them. We, we just glorify God for them and, and how God just keeps on blessing them. They made me want to play one of those ocarinas. I guess I better start with a pre card first. They move up to the sacks. We, we're just appreciative of, of our young people and those who work with them and make things possible. God has tremendously blessed us. Amen. 18 years. Amen. I said 18 years. God has, God has tremendously blessed us. And the good thing about God, He kept us through dangers seen and dangers unseen. And let me tell you, I found out later on that there were some dangers unseen. But God camouflaged it. He, he kept it from our hearts. And I'm, I'm glad about it. I'm glad. It is preaching time. I said it is preaching time. It is time to hear. It is time to hear from the man of God. It is preaching time. Uh, this man is no stranger to the New Beginning Church. And he's no stranger to these areas. He's Pastor Dr. Richard Booker of the Little Zion Church. I said Dr. Richard Booker of the Little Zion Church. Pastor Dr. Richard Booker. Pastor Dr. Richard Booker. For more than 30 years, he has been my mentor, my confidant. He's been my friend. He's been a friend of this church. He has been a friend of this church, has helped us through stuff that we could never imagine. And we are appreciative of him. We're appreciative of his mentorship. We're appreciative of his money. We're appreciative of him being a friend. And Dr. Richard Booker and our classmate, then he became my professor. And as we were sharing together, then he began to tell me what to do. Back in 1995. And uh, we really appreciate what he's doing in the great ministry at the Little Zion Church in Kellerman, Texas. So we want to welcome him to this, this anointed guest of authority. Will you stand up on your feet and welcome my friend, my brother, Pastor Dr. Richard.
say that you ought to feel like you in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I, I step in your comforts. Yeah. Amen. Or not feel like I'm walking down the street Amen. going to Dollar General. I ought to feel like I'm in the presence. Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor Davis and to this wonderful New Beginning Church, all of the dear members and friends, and uh, may I take just a moment to salute this youth ministry. Amen. Steal them. <laughs> and I might try it anyhow. Oh, how I thank God, you know, as I listen to Dr. Davis talk about the fact that they're here and not on the street. Amen. 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 And reporting themselves so well. Oh, yes. They can play beautiful music for the Lord. They know how to wear bells on their bridges. So, Pastor Davis, I want to commend you on 18 years. Wonderful, wonderful.
I knew the Greek in the beginning. Uh, Y'all know Pastor Rose, don't you? Pastor Rose says that if you go in somewhere and ain't nobody following you, he said you're not a leader. You're just taking a walk. And so New Beginning, I want to thank and salute you for being the fine church family. Everybody at New Beginning was. Some worked with him and some worked with him. <laughs> I just said that out of levity, but listen, uh, I see some of the wheels that turn and, and some of those who get things done. Any leader will know that without following, indeed, we're just out for a walk. But if we want something to happen, so without the vision, the people perish. But without the people, the vision will perish. And so you begin and give your hand, give yourself a hand. Give yourself a hand. Myriad friends and loved ones from Pastor and Sister Davis, and I thank God for your support and uh, all that you do. Amen. Now, uh, we have a, uh, you know, in the, in the beehive, they have the queen bee, they have a worker bee. Well, a lot of our queen bees do double duty. And so I want you all to meet my working queen bees, Sister Sharon. You know, you know, um, Sister Whitlock, I just, uh, I, I hate to make the comparison the way I do, but. It just always come into mind that way that when I think about Sister Booker uh, and, and what she does, yeah. I'm talking about the positive relationship. I, I think about Miss C All right. on, on the color button. Now, now let me finish. No, no, no. You know, she, she had a no good husband. Now, I'm not quite as no good as he is. She has no good husband. But one thing about it that whenever he needed something, Miss yes. Celia knew it before he did. Amen? Y'all remember that, don't you? And, and it's good to have somebody uh, that's doing and know what you need sometime before you know. And so we are blessed when we have those that walk beside us and, uh, and always remember, even though I, my analogy may not be good, but uh, a wise man can learn from a fool, but a fool who can't learn from anybody. Amen. All right, all right, all right. Well, listen. I think that after all of these young people singing and so on, that we could probably sing a couple other songs and go home uh, because uh, we don't need no old guy up here trying to tell everybody what to do. And so uh, we're not gonna we, we're gonna give part of our time uh, to the music ministry uh, of the Little Zion Church. Right, Amen. Right. Amen. And I'll say my speech and, uh, and bid you adieu. Uh, thank God for these wonderful musicians starting to thank you. Thank you, brother. Uh, up 
and coming sister and brother. And then our drummer, we got <laughs> Then we thank God for these celestial voices. But uh, if you would, uh, would you receive the uh, music ministry of Blue Line Church? They're going to come and share. If you would, they'll come back and talk with you uh, on what I said. Amen. Amen.
define these words in the English Standard Version of the Bible. It says, if you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus. Being trained in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you put these things before You will be a good shirt of Christ Jesus. And uh, thou twist and turn the folly. We just want to talk about a good shirt of Christ Jesus. Amen. A good shirt of Christ Jesus. Paul, in writing these words to Timothy in particular, but to all believers that would hear these words, he writes in general. And so as we attempted to be obedient, first of all, the spirit, and then uh, to the theme of what we are celebrating, We needed to have a need. Speaking to the needs of our pastor leader. Mm -hmm. And also to those that are following his leadership. And so all of us as believers should be striving to be the servant yes. 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 of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Somebody said that they came across a man and somebody asked him, uh, did he go to church? He said, no, I don't. <laughs> he said, uh, do you pray? He said, no, we got a preacher we paid to <laughs> pray for us. Well, well, well. Amen. <laughs> and as uh, facetious as that may sound, uh, there are a lot of folk, amen, that depend upon the preacher. Amen. amen. To do things that they themselves should be doing. And every last one of us should be striving today to be a good servant of Jesus Christ. It's not hard, Sister Annie Gibson, to work if you got a good boss man. Y'all didn't catch me. I, I messed up. I was not politically correct. <laughs> or boss lady. All right, all right. All right, all right. We got to, we got to be sure that uh, 
You recognize the fact that it just ain't men that can be bosses. Come on, man. Now, there's some things that only men can do. But there's only some things that only women can do. But to be a boss man, you could be male or female. And I know you can be bossy as a female. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. In, in this particular uh, text, uh, as Paul talks about a good servant, he introduces this, uh, and 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 then he uses about six imperatives uh, in the next few verses. We will not deal with all of those. We'll just touch on the one that he uses. But uh, when we talk about an imperative, it is not something that we are given a choice. All right. It's not something that we can do if we want to mm -hmm. or if we feel like it. Right. Right. But it is something that is imperative. It is something that uh, you must do if you are going uh, to meet a certain criteria or if you're going to be a part of a certain Situation. Now, um, if uh, I'm going to be a part of uh, a fraternal organization, uh, then I should adhere to the practices of that organization. Uh, and if I'm an alpha, I'm not going to be doing what Sigmas do. So can y'all help me? And, and if I am a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, I need to be a good servant yes, uh, of Jesus Christ. People, when they get around me, and if they're around me long enough, they should come to the conclusion as somebody did back in scripture to say that, you know, uh, that individual has been with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so today we, we celebrate 18 years okay. of service of Pastor Dr. Matthew Alexander David. <laughs> Amen. And, and we must recognize the fact uh, that if you are going to lead a church like this, you need to be a good servant of Jesus Christ. Now, it's all right to be popular. It's all right to be a, a lot of things. But if you are going to follow Jesus, you ought to be a good follower. Now, 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 Paul... Uh, says to young Timothy, I want you, in light of the situation that you are faced with uh -huh. uh, in the church where you pastor, I want you to learn to be a good church. Amen. 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 Listen, listen. We, we mustn't be slackers. When, as the old folk used to say, our children are going to hell in a handbag. When, 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 when murder is running rampant on our streets and our children that are going back to school and we are fearful for their safety. Uh, there is no place for the church to sit idly by on the sideline. And may I suggest to you, so you don't get me wrong, 
I'm not suggesting that you be a good Republican or Democrat. But what I am saying to you is that the church must be a good follower or must be good follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Don't don't and, and, and don't spend all of your time looking at Pastor David uh, to make sure he's doing what he ought to be doing. Amen. But but now you you're following him, but really you're following him because he's following Jesus. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a story that floats around in in our family. Uh, my daddy was a pastor, uh, and so uh, one Sunday morning, and I I hope this doesn't happen to uh, many pastors, but one Sunday morning, boy, him and Mama had a good old argument. <laughs> Amen. Before they went to church. And, uh, and they went on to church and so my older brother drove him uh, to church and my daddy got up and preached and uh, mama shouted all over the church. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Yeah. And so my older brothers, they could, they could say things to my parents that we couldn't. And so on the way home, uh, Willie said, Mama, I thought you said you were mad at daddy. Mm -hmm. Amen. And she said, I am. <laughs> she said, well, why did you shout and carry on when he preached? And she said, I look beyond the rascal. I'm, I'm cleaning it up for mama. I look beyond the rascal. And I saw Jesus. Help me somebody. So in, in, in spite of the fact that we are following yeah. Pastor David, Amen. We're going to have to do what? See Jesus. Because we are endeavoring to be good church. Yes. Of Jesus Christ. Yes, my brothers and my sisters. If we are going to follow Jesus, we must be careful of engaging and following the wrong folk. Amen. Yes, Paul says we need to be a good church. Mm -hmm. Amen. One uh, that have value and virtue. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Help me somebody. Yes, a good servant who uh, is excellent in that character. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, a good servant that uh, uh, is always willing to uh, endeavor to rise up to the standards mm -hmm. that are set forth by our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Right. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, uh, he said that we ought to be good servants. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need to understand that as a good servant, yes, we, 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 we just want to be useful. Well, Help me somebody. Yes, you know, a lot of folk yeah. in the church, and, and I don't mean to be mean, but uh, a lot of folk just want to be important. Mm -hmm. Help me if you can. Yeah. But if you're going to be a good church, yeah. you need to be useful. Yeah. Amen. Y'all ain't going to say amen. Amen. Uh, amen. If you don't say amen, I start fussing at you. Mm -hmm. Amen. But a good church is an individual that is going to be useful. Paul said to Timothy, Timothy, I want you to point out some things to the brethren. And he said, if you point out these things, he says, you will be a good servant. Okay. Pastor Davis, if you point out certain things yeah. to the New Beginning Church, mm -hmm. God will put you in the column mm -hmm. of being a good servant right. of Christ Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the first thing uh, that Paul talked about? He says, if you Yes, preach the unadulterated gospel. 
preach the truth of God's word. I'm going to put you in the column of being a good servant. Well, what about those that don't preach? If you teach, if you live, you need to live according to the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. And you too will be put in the category, into the column of being a good servant. Paul was telling Timothy that a good servant of Jesus Christ will proclaim the truth. My brothers and my sisters, I say to our church quite frequently that um, uh, the truth is under attack. Yes, Help me now. Yes, the, 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 the fact that they are always talking about what's true on CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, and all of that, that's no accident. Yes, but what it is intended to do is to permeate Amen. The body of information that you and I have that we have built our faith on that will cause us to begin to question whether or not we are right. And, and, and folk are talking about my truth and your truth. Well, listen, there's not but one truth. Yes, you, you can't have a truth over here and a truth over here. It's either a truth or it's a lie. And so Paul is saying to Timothy, Timothy, you must proclaim. You have to preach the truth. Now, 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 the proclaimer of the truth uh, is one that is not trying to pick out sociological facts. Uh, even though sociology does come into it, psychology comes into it. But what we are really trying to do is we are trying to lead our belief back to a faith system that will be out there on a hill called Calvary. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is, it's not about uh, uh, health and wealth. Right. And, and I wish I was wealthy, and I sure wish I was healthy, but it's not all about that. Right. Right. It's really about the blood yes, of Jesus Christ. Yes, and, and, and if I preach any other gospel, other than that, let me be a curse. Help me somebody. Because it is Jesus that does the saving. It is not your saving account that does the saving. But it is Jesus the Christ. Help me if you can. Paul wanted Timothy to warn the members of the church against falling away from the truth. And from the church. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you've got to go beg them to get out of them house dresses yeah. and come back to church now. Yeah. Help me, somebody. You, 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 you got to beg them now. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. To, to, to get up and put on their church clothes. Yeah. Amen. The same Jesus that we say, Oh, how I love you. Yeah. Amen. And if you really love me like that, don't ever come see me. I'm going to question your love. All right, all right. Say amen if you can. Amen. So Timothy warned uh, Paul that he has warned Timothy mm -hmm. that the church would have a tendency to have a fallen away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he says that listen uh, what is going to permeate that mm -hmm. is false teaching. Yes. And false doctrine. Amen. I always say to our folk that listen, if you want to uh, be able to distinguish between a counterfeit bill mm. and a real bill, mm -hmm. you don't study the counterfeit. Walk with me if you can. Yeah. But what you do is you learn all you can yes, sir. Yes, sir. about the real thing. And when you learn all you can about the real thing, when you look at the counterfeit, you won't have to even study it. It'll jump right off the page and say, I'm counterfeit. And so, Pastor Davis, you don't have to make a case against false doctrine. You just teach what's the truth is. 
You just proclaim the word of God. Because the word of God, I said the other night, the word of God is life, and life turns darkness into light. Paul said, listen, proclaim, proclaim the truth. Yes, and if you proclaim the truth, that which is false mm -hmm, mm -hmm. will be exposed. Right. Yes, sir. yes, one writer says that if it's false, it won't live. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. If it falls, you need to you need to hear that. Right. It, 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 it might look like it's going to live, uh -huh. but it'll fade away. Yeah. If it's true, it'll live. Yeah. Yes, if it's true, it'll bear the test of time. If it's true, you won't have to worry about it fading away. Yeah. If it's true. Yes. Your message. May be an. Unpopular one. Yeah. Help me if you can. Yes. Here I am. Struggling. Talking about the blood of Jesus. Mm. My neighbor down the road. Talking about how to get a new road to Lord. <laughs> Amen. I got a handful of members. Uh -huh. He got folk hanging off the seat. <laughs> Help me if you can. <laughs> My message is unpopular. Yes, sir. Uh, but the end thereof yeah. is where the difference will come in. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. They don't have no voices in heaven, y'all know that. Uh, and so what you need to understand is that we cannot preach just a popular message. We have to lay the truth before the people. We have to preach it when they want to hear it. We have to preach it when they don't want to hear it. Pastor, Pastor Dave is a, a good church. Well. will preach the word oh, yeah. of God yes, and will preach it with conviction. Yes. Yes. The children will say, I'm going to run on uh -huh. and see mm -hmm. what the end is going to be. Oh, yeah. friend of mine and I, we talk sometimes and we talk about what we're confronted with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we come to the conclusion that I think I'm going to try to make it in. Yeah. With what I started with. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm not going to get down here yeah. and, and switch horses yeah. Yeah. in the middle of the street. Yeah. So we, we have to share with people yeah. Yeah. with conviction uh -huh. yeah. what the Word of God yeah. says. Yeah. But not only must we share the Word, uh -huh. but we must be nourished. By the word. We, 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 me, you. All of us that are believers that are sharing the word. I can't just read the word when I'm trying to find something to preach. Amen. I need to live off of the word. It ought to be a steady diet in my life. Amen. I, 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 I need to nourish myself. Help me somebody before I try to help you. Yes, you know, they tell you on the airplane that uh, if you're traveling with somebody that can't put the mask on, they said uh, you put it on yourself first. And then you put it on the other individual. Well, the folk on the airplane know that if you're struggling trying to get somebody else's on, that you're going to die and they're going to die. Because you, you, you didn't have yours on and you couldn't get theirs on. But if you put yours on and then you help them, both of you will live. In the word of God, we must do what? We must nourish ourselves on the, the word of God. Amen. In order for me to be able to stand and Watch folk look at me with daggers in their eyes. I have to be nervous. I have to know that the Bible said that there is 
nothing that is formed against me yeah. can go prosper. Yeah. I don't know that. I get scared and yeah. I cut across the field and I leave out something. Yeah. But if I know the word yeah. for myself, yeah. I can stand and tell the dying word yeah. that the wage of sin yeah. is there. Yeah. But that the gift of God is eternal life. Brothers and my sisters, preachers need the word. Yeah, preachers need to have a study diet. Amen. It needs to hit them before it hit anybody else. The word cannot lead me, correct me, make me what I ought to be. Then I need to quit trying to tell somebody else. Yes, sir. But don't allow the fool mm -hmm. to determine what you're going to preach. Yeah. Yes, we sometimes get caught up on, you know, some stuff. And I thank God and I wanted to salute Pastor Davis for his uh, acquiring his doctorate and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, a man with a Ph.D. and no God in his heart is just a smart devil. Help me somebody. And, 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 and so don't allow folk, amen, to try to get you to dazzle them with a lot of knowledge. They don't know what you're talking about. And they, they hoop and holler when you say it. And they, they go away and they're not any better off yes, when they leave than when yes, they came. Well, right. And so I want to know about Socrates, Euripides. I want to know about all of them, but will none of them get you to heaven? Yes, yep, there's somebody. It doesn't do me any good to stand up here and tell you what I know about mythology and right. what I know about this one and that and so on and so forth because none of that will get you to heaven. It might make you think I'm smart. Yeah. Amen. When all I had to do was to read a little out of the literature. Yeah. Right. But I need to tell you yeah. what God yeah. said yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Yes, it's good to be well versed. Uh -huh. yeah. It's good to understand uh, things from all walks of life. It's uh -huh. good to understand many worldviews. Right, right. But you sure enough need to know Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, we need to be nourished. Yes. Uh, on the word of God. But not only that. Yes, we need to be those that hold up the word. Uh, as a banner. As a banner of holiness. Yes, uh, Paul was told, I'm sorry, Timothy was told by Paul that he was to do what? He was to, yes, be on purpose. One that would hold up a bloodstained banner for the Lord. Yes, that uh, uh, holiness was to be his end desire. You know, folk, uh, when I was growing up, folk used to say, well, you know, I'm not holier than thou. Mm -hmm. Well, there's nobody holier than thou. Mm -hmm. But you ought to be just as holy as the next fellow. Because yeah. if you're not holy, yeah. you're in a heck of a fix. Help me somebody. But Paul is told, if you read verses 7 through 10, Paul is told that, listen, holiness mm -hmm. should be your goal. Amen. We ought not be trying to skip around it. We ought not be trying to find a way around it. But as a part of what we do, as a part of being an overcomer, we must walk, yes, in holiness. Paul said, don't, don't listen uh, to the fables of this world. Don't, don't listen to the myths uh, that folks share with you. Uh -huh. You know, people say, well, you know, that's uh, no sage saying. Yeah. And that's all right, but uh, again, that won't get you to heaven. Yeah. Mama taught you some good stuff. Mm -hmm. 
But I hope she told you about Jesus. Yes, yes Paul said, listen, uh, there are some things that are good for you. Yes. But they can only get you so far. That's right. He said bodily exercise yes. will work well. Yeah. But there comes a time that all of the exercise you've ever done yes, sir. won't do you any good. Yes, sir. I've seen some men that threw themselves around on Sunday afternoon on football fields. Yes. They can run yes. faster than any of us. Right. Amen. They can hit harder than any of us. Yeah. Right. But now their knees are decrepit. Yeah. And they can hardly walk from one place to another. Right. Where did all of that get there? But I'm so glad today that if you have the word of God, yeah. it's able to get you all the way from earth to glory. Whatever, whatever situation you find yourself in, yes. the Word of God will get you old. Yes. I'm glad that the end of the Word of God was good for a little bit after the fall in the cotton fields of Arkansas. Yeah, I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, wound, and sad, but I found in him a resting place, and he had made me glad. I don't know how you feel about it, but I heard an old preacher say, son, if you come to Jesus, he'll make a difference in your life. And because Jesus buried a little baby, he died on a hill called Calvary. Between two things, he hung his head, his head is finished, and there he died. He took him down from that cross and put him in a body bag. He stayed in that grave. All my Friday, all my Saturday, there'll be somebody early, early, on Sunday morning, that'll come to the grave, lay the tight grave clothes, declare to a dying world, all power, all power. In my hand, some old preacher said he caught a fly. Back to glory, said the same way you see him go, he's coming back again. This sweet chariot from the stop by and let me ride. Going home, in my yard, in my tent, and then go home. Anybody in here trying to give your life to Jesus? 
Sometimes you're the janitor. Sometimes you, you know, you're security. You, you know, there's all these different parts, all these different things, all these different hats that you're wearing. And I just want to say that you all wear it well. You're doing great. And we celebrate you today. Amen. We celebrate you. Uh, yes. Okay. 
So we celebrate you this day and congratulate you on 18 years and a new beginning uh, for, for just following being the, the pastor that you are, the leaders that you are. We celebrate you this day. Amen. God bless each of you, and uh, we pray that uh, something was said today that would be a blessing to you, and that you would be just a little bit better going out than you were when you came in. Uh, <clears throat> of course, I acknowledge the presence of our music ministry, but we do have some other members in the congregation. I see Sister Gibson there. I see Reverend Good John came in a little bit later, and I thank God for that presence here also. Amen. Along with all of you. And, uh, yeah, Pastor, it's a, it's a walk in the fog. They got rattlesnakes and crocodiles. That they must be talking about the Brad's being State Park down the road. They got all kind of stuff in there. <laughs> all right. Now, the program uh, says that it is offering time. Now, if uh, I were to ask you today, what kind of giver you are. You would tell me that you are a great giver. Uh -huh. Amen. Rain man, so I'm an excellent driver. I'm an excellent driver. I'm an excellent driver. <laughs> you, would, you would tell me I, I'm an excellent giver. I'm an excellent giver. Well, I'm not going to ask you. So you don't have to tell me. But what I am going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to give. Amen. And then you're going to determine whether you are an excellent giver or not. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So we're going to give. Well, we have a special offering. Is that right, uh, sis? Special no. offering for the pastor? No, sir. I want to have Oh, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm having uh, surgery. Uh-huh. Surgery. The first part of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Listen, let me tell you, folk tell you this, but this is the truth. We are concerned about your welfare. Amen. Amen. Because of that, we're going to stop right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we're going to attend to your need. Okay. Would that be all right, baby? Yes, sir. That's the kind of God we say. Yes, oh, yeah. Amen. 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 I want, I want a couple of, uh, I'll come back Before you, 
in the presence of angels. For the benefit of us. Lord, she's at one of those places in life that, that it comes up from time to time. That will challenge us. But she has the faith to say, pray for me. Here we are holding on your man. Asking your God to touch her body in the name of Jesus. Got the hand of the Lord in the name of Jesus. All of those that are in charge of our kids, oh God, you got it. You keep this. You are not been a bit. Now, God, we ask your blessing that once she has had her treatment, she will be returned to the church. But she'll be able to carry out the word. But you have assigned her hand. Now bless her right now in the name of Jesus. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. And bless all of these. Yes, Lord. The Lord has gone out from this. Yes, Lord. These blessings we ask in the name of Jesus.
bless the offering. We want to ask that the uh, uh, New Beginning Church, her ministry, uh, will come with your presentation. blessed us through many things yes, sir. and God has been faithful. Yes. I ask my wife to join me here. Amen. I just got to look and do it. I just <laughs> I showed up just got looking back. <laughs> Let me, let me begin by thanking Dr. Richard Jewell, Dr. Richard Jewell. He's a little lighter than a left taller. Well, doc, thank Dr. Dr. Richard Booker for who he is and what he does in and, and our lives. They look like twins, can't you tell? 
They act like twins. They hang out like twins. They fight like twins. Thank you, God, to look us for for the word of God. Then not the command of God shall be Thank you so much, Thomas. I'm going to begin also by thanking the New Beginning Church. Amen. Our faithful members, members who have done things that the Lakewood Church can't do. I think I said that two more times. The members of the New Beginning Church who have done things that the Lakewood Church can't do. Only one more. The members of the New Beginning Church have done things, have done things that the Lakewood Church can't do. God has blessed us to do so much with so little, so long, until we think we can do anything with God. We just believe that God has blessed us and, and we have faithful members. Uh, many churches, many churches had to stop, close down, shut down, and they were very concerned about their finances during COVID-19. But the faithful members of the New Beginning Church yeah. came through financially and this and that. Thank you for having a heart for God. Thank you for having a heart for souls. Thank you for staying on the wall and not giving up. Yes, yes. And many had counted us out. And whenever I hear another preacher say about a different church, that that church ought to shut its doors, I know that that same preacher is talking about us also. But God has been faithful to us. He has, he has blessed us. Over 25 entities have met at this church at any given period of time. And we don't have holes in the walls. We don't have paint peeling. And this building is 15 years old. It's because of the faithful members of the New Beginning Church. Faithful in Sunday school. Faithful in Bible study. Faithful in worship service. Faithful in women and men's ministries. Faithful members of the New Beginning Church. Who has held it together. Even when we didn't agree. They followed leadership. And I thank God for you. I want to thank the Herod Ministry for holding up the pastor's arms. All of you who have given, all of you who have participated, it is the branch of the Herod Ministry that, that makes sure that Sister Davis keep looking good. Amen. It was Aaron and her that held up Aaron's, Aaron and her that held up, held up Moses' arm when they were losing the battle. And raising them. And therefore, it's the herd ministry that holds up our arms that we do not take it for granted. So, thank you so much for giving. I want to thank my wife, Mrs. Carolyn Jean Davis. She used to be old, but now she's proud to be a Davis. Reverend Simmeran, Reverend Simmeran, when she got through running me down, oh, no. asking me out on a date, and finally gave me Reverend Simmeran. Now she's proud to be called a date. <laughs> so she still ran some time. I hear her on the phone talking, and she introduces herself as, as Carolyn Davis. <laughs> I said, yeah, she's so happy to be a Davis. <laughs> she just gets joy out of being, being a Davis. And she and my daddy were favorite friends of each other. They used to sit at home. Daddy told her, every time you come home, he's going to run the street, but you, you can sit right here. And they sit there and talk for hours and hours. And she learned all of our history, and she left out the house every time, just glad to be a Davis. <laughs> You can see her Facebook page that says Carolyn or Davis. She ain't no or no more. She's been a Davis for 22 solid years. Yeah. 
the late President John F. Kennedy, when he would go overseas, his wife was very much more popular than he was. And so when he went overseas one time, he wanted to see how he could get in with the leadership overseas. So what he did was he introduced himself as the escort for Jacqueline Kennedy. So when I want to get in doors that, that I can't get open, I introduce myself as the escort for Sister Carolyn Kennedy. And I can get in doors. I just want to thank her for being who she is. And, and I dare tell you, 98% of the children at our church came out of her music ministry. And she's reaching young people. And I, I told I told the Malo children and, and the Galvan children, you're not here because of me. You ain't, I ain't fooling you, ain't fooling me. You are here because of music and Sister Carolyn Davis. And I'm all right with it. So thank you so much. Let me thank the Little Zion Church, the Riverbrook Church. Uh, Pastor Booker said that the preacher needs to hear a word from the Lord. He needs to be energized. And so this morning, I want to thank the Holman Street Church who have members here also. Um, I ran over to the Holman Street Church to hear the man of God break the word of God. And so then Pastor Booker confirmed the fact that, that we all need to hear the word. So I rushed down to 88, the police was sitting there with his radar, and I slowed down just in time, Brother Miles. <laughs> because I really didn't want to have a conversation with <laughs> And so I want to I want to thank the Holman Street Church for nourishing me and building me and instructing me. And that church has been a major, major influence in my life. It was at that church that I learned that basic fundamental principles get people saved. And so I want to thank the Holman Street Church for being that kind of church, for influencing me. And, and making me who I am today. So if, the, if you see something I did not do well as a pastor of a New Beginning Church, look at the Homer Street Church and blame, blame Deacon Roosevelt Weeks for, for, for not doing it the right way. Deacon Weeks came in and he and I were roommates. We, our parents lived next door to each other over 40 some years. And uh, we lived and grew up as brothers, so I followed him here. And I want to thank him and the Holman Street Church, as well as the Bug family, for, for just impacting my life. I want to thank the Holy Trinity Church for, for being present in my life today. And Pastor Richard Jewell Rose and the members who have come with us today. I want to thank Minister Silveran and his, his wife. I want to thank Minister Dilworth and his wife, Minister Good Joint. Thank you, men of God, for, for being here. Thank you, Pastor Watson. Pastor Watson and I share this pulpit every Sunday, and uh, we have a kindred spirit with each other. I want to thank him for always being so supportive of the New Beginning Church. I'm going to ask the His Past Cyclists to stand there. There are some His Past Cyclists here today. And they showed up in the house. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for being present. Um, we usually meet Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And, and some of them, I'm not going to say who, but the one with the red, blue on didn't make it on yesterday. We were 23 miles. She, 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 she posted later saying she. But, anyways, I want to thank them. We are a cycling ministry where we pray with each other, for each other, and we pray for those who, who need our help. I want to thank our bilingual service, our bilingual church. Our bilingual church. In the past, we've had two Spanish, two Spanish services at any given time, but now we have a bilingual church where they can hear the preacher in real time through Spanish. And you see that handsome brother back there in the shield. And then Aureli has been doing it, and they, they serve as our, our bilingual communicators. So in real time, they are hearing through their ear the message. So today, Pastor Booker spoke in tongues. <laughs> he, he's preached in tongues. <laughs> so 
So I want to I want to thank those in in the media ministry who who participated to make all things work well. I want to thank our members, past, present, and future. What I just said was I want to thank our past members and those who need to be members. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for being a part of it. Eileen, uh, thank you for for being our drummer. I said this before. I gotta say it again. When, when Sister Eileen walked around and got on the drums, Twitter went crazy. <laughs> what Twitter said was, that the daddy should put that African girl on that drums. <laughs> Did you see Brother Whitlock's face when that African girl walked over there? And she sat on the drums and Brother Whitlock was embarrassed to get up off the drums. And she, that African girl hurt his feelings. And her husband was sitting there beside her, and her husband, I'm just telling you what they're going to say, brother. Her, her husband was cheering her on while she beat the drum. That African girl, the Pastor Davis, had removed Brother Whitlock from the drums for that African girl to play the drums. So thank you, Eileen, for taking the slide, for being an African for the day. And, and take it, Brother, brother Whitlock play. Brother Whitlock, you all right now? <laughs> so thank you, thank you so much for participating, for being a part. All our youth and our young people, thank you. Thank God for the youth and young people of the youth ministry. <laughs> those who participated on the program, the Whitlocks, Sister Woods, uh, those in the in the choir loft, the musicians. Thank you, guest musicians. Thank you for being a part. Thank you for, for being singers. Thank you for making this day be all that it can be. Our commission is the resource for Christ. And COVID-19 has shown us that we have to change the method. As we look up around the room every Wednesday and every Sunday, we realize that some people just are not present. But as, as it has been said earlier, they are present at every trail ride. They are present at every sporting event. They act like we're manufacturing COVID-19 at the New Beginning Church. So what we have to do is find a way to reach those who have gotten comfortable. Pastor Booker says they still got their pajamas on. And we have to find a way to reach them. So I submit these three things. We must begin our prayer walks again. When we walk the neighborhoods and call on Jesus for every neighborhood that surrounds these premises. While they're asleep, while they are coming in from late night, the New Beginning Church have to walk the premises, walk the street, and call on God. The reason why situations are as bad as they are is because the church is not calling on God. So as a corporate unity, we have to walk the streets again and call on the Lord. And ask God to bless this place. And ask God to bless us. Ask God to reach souls for Christ. For the labors are few. But the fruit is ripe. Whenever you have children that's disrespectful to parents, the fruit is ripe. Whenever we have people that will shoot you, kill you, gun you down for no apparent reason at all, the labors are fruit, but the harvest is right. So I submit us again walking the street, imparting our lives in neighborhoods, and asking God to turn it around. God is able to turn it around. The next thing I submit to us today is to go back to knocking on doors, reminding people that we are on the side of the road. And we are that beacon light that's been holding this community together. And when we knock on doors, we leave flyers to remind them 
If God opens the door, if God opens the opportunity, then we will share Jesus Christ with them. So it's time for us to do it again. And now, since we we're in this technological world, and preachers that never been on TV is world renowned now. I say to you today, whenever the ministry of God is going forward, whenever they're streaming going forward, don't be too mean to hit share now. Don't be too mean to submit to the New Beginning page. Make sure that you reach souls for Christ. And, and this is a new avenue for many of us. But if we just share now, one flip of the button, share now. And you know, it may make it so simple now. And then tell your folk, tell your co-workers, tell, tell your neighbors, tell your, your relatives that the word of God is going forward in an uncompromising way. If I'm going to be a good servant of the Lord, as Pastor Booker has said, I need your help. I need you to reach out to those who know you well. As our music ministry has shown us, only 7% of people come to church because of the pastor's great message. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven percent of the people come to church or listen to church or watch church because the pastor knows how to say it. But a whopping 43% of the people who attend any given church is because they know somebody there and that church is doing something to reach souls for Christ. I need you, the 43%, to tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your associates that Jesus is real. Yes, he is. Share your page. Share your enthusiasm. Because people are dying and really, really, really going to hell. But we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. And we need to make sure we don't lose our sight. That's why we are united in church. Strengthening families. Supporting schools. And empowering neighborhoods. To reach the world. But Jesus says, in I. If I be lifted up from the earth, we'll draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. That's the book. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Sister Davis. And thank you for the beginning. It's been a blessing being here today. Thank God for uh, individuals that haven't seen before, get a chance to meet. Thank God for those who have been walking this way with me for a while. We're so grateful to God for all of you. What's your name? Deborah, my sister. Yeah, Deborah, good to see you all the way over here with uh, Sister Tony. Good to see you. Today. All right, we're ready to go home, y'all.
Lord, keep giving me an opportunity day in and day out, week in and week out, to stand and declare your word to a dying world. Help the people to see the vision followed in his leadership, even as he preaches Christ and him crucified. And every church that is represented here, let us be sure that we be a committee of one that will help hold up the blood stained banner of the Lord. Now God just bless us and keep us. And as we prepare to go down from this place, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest rule and abide with each of us. Now henceforth and forever, may we all respond. Amen. Will you please give the preacher a fish bump, a fish bump? And also last night I was able to export Sister Davis to a to a, a co-worker of hers 100th year birthday. 100th birthday. And so they made me walk out with the whole sheet cake. So if you want some cake, get your sugar rush on. You can go right back here at the Fellowship Hall and you will be served. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming.